Hello again, it's Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit here on MAV-TV, talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you joined us. Ashley Stremme and Steve Post, and we are talking some home cooking here over the, the last weekend with the uh, with the short track, uh, what was it called? The World, uh, world Short Track Finals? Yeah, World Short Track Finals. Or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it written down here somewhere. Yeah. Hold on one second. Now, that's going to drive me crazy. <laughs> okay, World Short Track Championship. Oh, championship. There we go. Not oh, finals. it's a championship, not Sorry. finals. Because this week is the World that's Finals right. ongoing now. So, uh, neat, neat stuff. Fun, fun stuff. Always, always fun when the racing world comes to Charlotte. It really is. Absolutely. You know, it's like Christmas in July, but in November yes. this year. <laughs> and it feels like Christmas the way the weather has been. Oh, my God. Listen, you. You buttercups that are going to be here tonight, bundle up, yeah. because it is going to be so cold. So Man, cold. it is going to be. It really, truly is. And if you're in town or watching this this morning, and you're here in the Charlotte area, 11 o'clock, we're at the NASCAR Hall of Fame with Dry Dean Wing Nation Legends. And at 3 o'clock, we're at... The uh, right outside of the ticket window mm -hmm. with Dry Dean Race Day Live. So, going to be fun. I got something to show you, though. Oh. Okay, our buddies. Uh -huh. Okay, you know our friends. Look at this. Now, I got a McLean Motorsports. <laughs> our boys, Jacob and, and Brandon and, and Doug, the father. Okay, now, I got this, okay? And Doug said, he told me, he said he would get one for you. Oh, uh -huh. But he doesn't have any because all of his friends have X's in their sizes. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> All a bunch of big boys, and so you don't qualify as a big a boy. You don't get a shirt. Okay, so that's good right there. That's the side. Now I want to I want to point something out on this. Aaron's trucking here on the back. You see Aaron's trucking mm -hmm. here on the back. That's the shrimps guy. Oh, that's okay. That's the guy that up at uh, up in Madison made the shrimp. Uh huh. And then we got into it at KKR. They had a um, they had a flea market, a racers flea market. Okay, mm -hmm. and we got Doug and I got into the shrimps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you what, Doug and I were were shot. We were useless. We were worthless. We were junk. Hey, speaking of busy, the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour has wrapped up a busy season. They wrapped it up at Texas last week. It was a great racing. Watch this. Check this out. Tony Stewart, Aaron Reitzel, and Terry McCarl. Racing boys had it. It was Brian Hobart with the call. It is our Dry Dean Diesel All Deftifying Move of the Week. And now for the Dry Dean Deftifying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazed us with their on track moves. Battling at the front of the field, second, third, and fourth, all up for grabs right now. Stewart, McCarl, and Reitzel all duking it out. Stewart gets by both of them through turns one and two. They both come back after him in turns three and four. Stewart reports to the outside. McCarl down to the bottom. Reitzel's going to look lower than him, nearly three wide to the front straightway. Stewart's going to hold on to it. That deaf defying move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Deaf, the official deaf of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. It is Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. So glad you joined us. And there's so many storylines we've had over the course of Wing Nation. One of the storylines is young talent. Yes. And I, 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 do we have young talent? And much of the young talent is from the state of California. I think the outlaw carding culture and, and, and those type things. And we are joined. He is the... Fremont, Ohio, which will explain that <laughs> as well. He is the champion from Fremont, Ohio. Michael Buddy Kofoy joins us. Hello, Buddy. Welcome into Wing Nation. Hey, guys. No, I, I uh, appreciate you guys having me on. It's always fun uh, chatting with you guys. And, um, yeah, I look forward to it. And I appreciate you guys having me on. Okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna go right at this. Okay, um, young talent from California. How did you get started? Where did the racing bug bite you? All those years, well, you're 17. All those years ago, where did the racing bug bite you? <laughs> well, really, before I started um, even racing, um, my dad and, and all his friends they really rode dirt bikes even before I came around, and then he, they were still always riding dirt bikes together. And, I got my first dirt bike on my second Christmas. Um, 
so I my birthday is December second, so I just turned two, and I you know I got a Suzuki JR50 and and rode for a few years and went into racing outlaw carts, um, which I spent about in total probably six seven years in outlaw carts yeah. and got rid of that and decided to go the the wing route, which was more dominant in California. And, um, and then the next year, uh, Heather Boyce and Brian Crockett kind of helped us out from Oregon. And and because my dad and I still had our own car, so we would go up to Oregon 20 to 30-ish times, Oregon and a little bit of Washington, actually. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, one one there once or twice and and uh, with second points. Um, so that was another pretty... Pretty good season, and then um, you know I was finally old enough at 14 to um, race California. So I started racing for Dan again for uh, 360 and 410s wing, and a little bit of non-wing, and um, actually one or two midget races. So I was kind of doing um, a few different things, which which um, you know I thought and, and still think that it's good to stay versatile and do um, different things and. Yeah, and then the, the next year I raced for Dan again, and and that was my best season in California. Won seven times and and got my first 410 win at Ocean, and the Linders was one of them. So I gave Mike Linder a call and I said, "Yeah, I'll try and try and work something out or whenever we're open." And and it was about a couple months later, and I said, "Yeah, we can do a couple races this weekend," and and then we just kind of went from there. And so in total, we did about six races for. Uh, Ed Neumeister and the Lenders in Ohio, and um, you know that turned into them wanting me um, the next year full time, which was this past year. And um, we had a pretty good season out in the Midwest, and um, got a lot of experience, and seen a lot of new places, and had had some good runs. And yeah, like you said, got the Fremont Championship, and um, you know my first All Star win, and and some pretty good finishes at the Outlaws here and there and um yeah it was definitely a lot of fun and then you know I just started racing doing some races for Keith Coons <laughs> recently here and there and some smart car and midget stuff and um that's how that's been going pretty good so um yeah we'll see uh what happens I think uh, there's a chance I'm gonna go to Australia this year so um so that should be a lot of fun so um, I've been there once before a couple of years ago and then actually was just in New Zealand uh, at the beginning of this year. So um, it's always fun not really having an off season. So, um, yeah, I'm just, just having a blast. And he's 17 years old, in case you didn't catch that. Oh, my God. <laughs> One heck of a background already. And, buddy, I want to talk about this year specifically. The 8R, the 11N, the 21, the 97, the 67 are all cars that you have raced just this year at 17. What is it like just going amongst all those cars, being the age that you are, and really kind of housing in on your driving ability? Uh, well, it's, it's been, you know, really crazy. I, I kind of forgot about some of the numbers you just mentioned. And, um, you know, I've just been blessed with good opportunities. And, and getting in good equipment helps. Um, you know, when you're running with, with really good guys, which is pretty much anywhere you go. So, um, like, getting on the 11N is, is a really good local car in Ohio, and, and we were even traveling a little bit and was doing good on some of the bigger levels at times. And and then, uh, you know, getting in Keith Coons Midget um, just really helps your learning curve because I don't, you know, I barely get to do midget races. I've probably only oh. done six or seven in my career, and... Uh, half of them has been this year, so um, so running for him makes makes it easier to learn and and um, you know they're the the best in the bid, in the business in midgets, so um, there's just a lot to learn from and, and good good people around that team and um, that are willing to help out and and then even getting in his his stunt car Eldora um, was a lot of fun and and we had a good run there with the All Stars and. Um, and then getting in the Tarleton cars, it's been a dream of mine, um, since, I don't know, since I was 13 or 14, so I was really happy to be able to do that, and then, you know, racing for Doug Root all, most of last year, 
and even in, in New Zealand, um, because of him, I got the opportunity to race in New Zealand for the first time and, um, you know, had a really good run down there and it just getting in really good cars with, with really good people, uh, makes it a lot easier to do good or just makes your job easier. And yeah. I'll say. It's more I'd... fun and enjoyable. Yeah. It is. It, it's absolutely amazing the numbers you're putting up with the different cars, the different rides, and the different opportunities. Buddy, hang in there with us. Everyone else, stick around. More with Buddy Kofoid coming up in just a moment. want to remind you, Hercules Tires giving away a set of tires here in the month of November. Go to HerculesTires.com slash MRN and register. More with Buddy Kofoid in just a moment. Do a little shopping? Well, I heard... An apple a day keeps a doctor away, and ten keeps the competition away. I got you a Granny Smith seeing you're a little sour. From sweet to tart and everything in between, Sage Fruit supplies every variety of apple that shoppers may be looking for. For over three generations, they've been providing customers with only the best apples, pears, and cherries that Washington has to offer. You're finally taking my advice. Well, something like that. I figured out how to get my ten apples in a day. Sage Fruit. It's the choice of champions. We are having a ball. Buddy Kofoid joins us on the Hercules Tire Hotline here on Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. So glad that you have joined us and, and chatting with Buddy. Okay, so Buddy, we talked about, before the break, we talked about, you know, how you got to this point and all the rides and all the racing in New Zealand and Australia, you know, all of this. My question is, you're 17 years old. How does school work for you? Or do you just blow that off? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm still, uh, I'm a senior. I like okay. that. Um, you know, a little under a year left. And um, so what I do, is, it's not really called homeschool. It's called um, independent study. So um, so you go in at, at certain times that, that, that fit you. So for me, the times I schedule with the classes I have, I go Wednesday um, and then I go Thursday all, all in the morning. So I spend about an hour, hour and a half there depending on how much time um, you know, I need with the teacher and whatnot. And, you know, it's all based around kids with um, extracurricular activities or, you know, even full-time jobs. Or, so at my school, I bet you could come up with, with a lot of different answers for what they do and why um, they're at the school, which is called Valley Oaks. So um, it's, it's really cool, and it, it helps me out a lot. It's absolutely incredible that a school will work with you yeah, like that, especially uh, knowing that you're chasing your dreams, doing, you know, what you need to do to, to make your career what it is. And, and that being said, buddy, ultimately, you know, racing spring cars, you said earlier, racing through Tarleton was a, a dream for you at, at 17. I absolutely love that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, for you, where do you really want to see this go? I mean, what are your hopes and dreams and aspirations? Uh, my... My end goal and, and dream is to to make it to NASCAR and Racing Cup. Um, so I'd love to love to do that. I've always always wanted to race in NASCAR since I was probably four or five, as far as I can remember. Because um, I always my first NASCAR hero was was Dale Jr. and probably still is, um, even though he doesn't race now. But you know, I've always always loved watching Jr. and and um, but as as uh, you know, as I got a little older, the past three three or four years, I've become very fond of of uh, Formula One, and um, especially the history of it. So, um, kind of in all of the history of Formula One, I've I've been a, become a big fan of Ayrton Senna, and uh, I've even got a helmet um, painted after his. Um, but Noah from Shell Shock put some some of his own touches on it, and it really came out great and um so i don't think the route i'm taking would take me to formula one but um i'm just a big fan of that but definitely i would love to, to get to nascar so buddy when you when you look at this is there a is there a timeline in 2021 i need to be here 2022 i need to be here 2023 or is it or is it still just right now seek the best opportunity get the best opportunity and and and, and hope that path leads me in that direction uh, I would say both. Um, okay, yeah. There's there's times where, you know, we'll make timelines or, um, you know, maybe try and shoot for this to get here. But then at the same time, um, you know, seeking opportunities and doing the best you can and what you 
what you get in, and hopefully it leads to a better thing. And then maybe they have connections to take you to, um, you know, the next step on your timeline. So um, I would say both, and I I think they both work together actually hand in hand. So, um, but yeah, it's just racing is is performance driven, and um, just trying to do the best I can to get where I want to be. Yeah, absolutely. We're right up against the break here on, uh, on on time as far as that goes. Earlier this year, a month or two ago, you posted that you were seeking opportunities. Um, how is that going? Is there anything that you've announced yet, or is you still in the sorting out phase? I know your phone's been busy. Are you still in the sorting out phase, or where are you at with that? Um, yeah, I'm still sorting it out right now. Um, still figuring out maybe what's best or, or um, what I would like to do. Um, but yeah, I've been in contact with some people, and it's um, we'll just see what where it leads to. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to next year, and and um, yeah, just have more fun, and and just trying to do the best I can. Like I said, get to that next step um, to where I want to be. Absolutely, it's been fun to watch the short career so far. It's been impressive to watch. I know you're. I know it's it's interesting in the names. We had Kyle Larson here um, a couple of years ago. He mentioned your name from the Outlaw Karting Showdown. Uh, you hung out with the Linders. You're hanging out with Keith Coon. Just great, great people to have around you. So you're doing a good job surrounding mm-hmm. yourself with some good folks. That's for sure. And we appreciate the time. We wish you the best as you as you roll into the off season and uh, into 2020. We appreciate the time. Oh, thank you guys. I appreciate appreciate you having me on, and um, it's always always fun talking to you guys. Whether it's uh, like uh, outdoor or live, was a lot of fun, or over the phone. So uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys later, and thanks for having me on. Good stuff. Good times. Buddy Kofoid joining us here on the Hercules Tire Hotline. What a future. I just wish I had my stuff together like he does I wish at, at 17. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, at 55, I wish I had my act together like he does at 17. Absolutely I agree with that. Incredible. Uh, Hercules Tires, again, the free set of tires, www.herculestires.com slash MRN. Our Tweet Your Seat Tweets of the Week are coming up next. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry leading protection to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. It is time for the Tweet Your Seats Tweets of the Week. And we're kicking it off with Texas Motor Speedway. These tweets come from Peter, Evan, and Colton. It was the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour. Tony Stewart presents the Vancouver Texas Sprint Car Nationals. Thursday, oh, Terry McCarroll. T-Mac cowboyed up <laughs> on him. That's right. Oh. 14th career National Tour win. 15th different National Tour winner in know, 2019. And he was followed up by Sam Haferty Jr. and Dylan Westbrook. That brings us into Friday with Scott Baguski. That's Gotta right. love that last name. And he's from Australia, so there there's that go. too. <laughs> Third win of this season, Wild Race. He sl- 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 go ahead. A slide job city. There was like every time you looked in a corner, someone was sliding. Slide somebody. job. Slide job. Slide job. Slide job. That was crazy. It really was. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so Scott picked up the win. He was followed by two other strong names of yeah. Aaron Reitzel and Tony Stewart. Pretty pretty cool stuff. Um, Sam Haferty Jr., his fourth consecutive championship with 10 wins. He is the 2019 champion. And uh, the Brodix National Rookie of the Year was John Carney. Yeah, we talked to John a year or two ago on one of these shows. Great, great guy. Stockton Dirt Track tweets from Bud Kading and Willie Croft. Okay, now fans don't tweet us from California, (laughs) but the drivers do. All right. So Stockton Dirt Track tribute to Gary Peterson, or Patterson, that is, GP, King of the West uh, by NARC Fujitsu Series. The winner of the race was Shane Golubek. He led flag to flag first win of the season, like a 10th win of a 10th different winner of the King of the West series. Golubek was the winner over Willie Croft and DJ Netto. This was the one where the point battle was tied oh, that's right. with Netto and Bud Kading and Dominic Selzy was right behind him. Well, Netto ends up <laughs> your champion, first career championship. Listen to this, Ashley. Consistency. He did not win a race. Okay, yeah. 17 top 10 finishes in 19 races. Man, DJ Netto, he wore him out out there this year. <laughs> he sure did. 
Now we're off to Arizona Speedway. This tweet comes from Nate Vinnick. <laughs> yes, exactly. I have, I have no idea what that is. Yes. It's the ASCS Desert Non-Wing Series. Your winner was Bruce St. James, the radio flyer. Yeah. I'd love to know how he got that I know, nickname. and I looked all over and couldn't figure out how he got that nickname. <laughs> cool I was stuff. digging for that, too. He races in the U.S. or the USAC, the ASCS, the Napa Spring Cars, and 24 Hours of Le Mans. No, no, no. That's not Le Mans. <laughs> that's lemons. lemons. That's lemons. That's the Obama <laughs> classes that run at road courses. That's the That's 24 hours of awesome. lemons. Georgetown from C.K. Wood, Mid-Atlantic Sprint Car Series. Winner was Jeff Gages, fourth win of the season. Gages over Andy Best and Tom Carberry. It was Ricky DeEva was the champion in his rookie season. How about that? This tweet comes from Brendan. It is the Sun Gold Stadium yes. for the season opener at Premier Speedway in Australia. And none other yeah. than uh, the Australian himself, who's done a lot in the States this year. James McFadden wins by .0059 over Luke Oldfield. And finally, some <laughs> asphalt racing. Look at this modified. This is Brian DeFalbo. Okay, this is from Patricia at Evergreen Speedway. Brian, when I was there in the, in the early 90s, Brian just started racing. Sophie's Tiki Lounge, which is a <laughs> bar, good time place. That's his grandmother. He continues to do it. He finished 17th. Roger Cross picked up the win in the race up at uh, Evergreen Speedway. So a little asphalt modified there racing for sure. And then you, we oh, yeah. both, I mean, yeah. I didn't have time to tweet. You tweeted your I seat. Did, yes. You get the gold star for the week. The World Short Track Championships. Um, it 400 cars were there this, this weekend. This was an unbelievable event at the dirt track. Absolutely incredible. Crazy. You name it. I know. They had race cars there. <laughs> there was cars everywhere. There was cars everywhere. So I'll tell you, it was amazing. So thank you for all of the tweets. Tweet your seat. Keep them coming in. We need to step away. More Wing Nation in just a moment. Do a little shopping. Well, I heard an apple a day keeps a doctor away. And 10 keeps the competition away. I got you a Granny Smith seeing you're a little sour. From sweet to tart and everything in between, Sage Fruit supplies every variety of apple that shoppers may be looking for. For over three generations, they've been providing customers with only the best apples, pears, and cherries that Washington has to offer. You're finally taking my advice. Well, something like that. I figured out how to get my 10 apples in a day. Sage Fruit, it's the choice of champions. Wing Nation by Sage Fruit rolling along here as we are coming close to wrapping up the season. Oh, boo-hoo on that, yeah. One uh, hey, show. if you're watching this in the Charlotte area this morning, 11 o'clock, NASCAR Hall of Fame, it is Dry Dean, Wing Nation Legends, Ray Evernham, Tony Stewart, and Legends of the Sport, and 3 o'clock out at the Fan Zone, Dry Dean, Wing Nation Race Day, right across from the ticket booth. That's right. Gates Front open at 4, we're there at 3 o'clock, we're going to have a big old party. Yeah. Oh, we're going to yeah. We're going to be bundled up. We right? are going to be bundled up, that's for sure. <laughs> so, great stuff. So, if you're out there and about, certainly check us out here with the World Finals. And make sure you tweet your seat because yes. we're going to need all of them with the World Finals. Everybody to tweet your seat over the course of it. And then what we're going to do next week here on Wing Nation, we're going to wrap it up with the champion of the World of Outlaw NOS Energy Sprint Car Series. And the good news is we don't know who that is. No. We're usually we have this show planned That's like a right. month in advance. It's always but, done. But uh, neat stuff. And done. also, the World Finals does not end the sprint car season no. in North America. The final 410 race is next Saturday, Babs Motor Speedway, the Goofy Sprint Showdown up in Pennsylvania. Well, of course it's Pennsylvania. Okay. <laughs> it sounds kind of $10,000 to win up at BAPS next Saturday. So Posse fans, you're not out of the woods yet. Take no. your tush seeders. That's right, yes, Peters. exactly. Peter seeders. Peter seeders, teeters, <laughs> yes, exactly. So hey, we appreciate Buddy Colfoyd for joining us here on Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. But more important than all of that, thank you for joining us here this week.